You want to encourage to go out into those rather than into your graft. Make certain before you plant it, rough up that old root ball. We've got a new addition in our blueberry bed. We've talked about rabbit eye blueberries. Hello, welcome to Oklahoma Gardening. I'm one of the former hosts, Jim Gallett. I think I'm one of the most far-flung of the former hosts. I'm coming to you now from the Champlain Valley of Vermont, um, and welcome to my garden. One of the things that I love to grow is gladiolus. I grow it in the vegetable garden, and I grow them as cut flowers because I, they don't work for me very well in the garden. They start looking kind of shabby. But if you grow them as cut flowers, you can keep the dead flowers trimmed off, and you can get several weeks of or a couple of weeks of bloom out of them, different arrangements as you keep them trimmed down. I have these growing up through a lattice work, so I don't have to stake them individually. As they grow, I make sure they grow up. That supports them, it keeps it from flopping over, and it keeps the stems nice and straight. The climate up here is very different from down in Oklahoma, but a lot of the techniques that I used in my garden in Oklahoma, I use up here. This is a little trick that I actually came across down at a pumpkin farm when we visited it down near Oklahoma City. They were growing their gourds on it. It's a 16-foot cattle panel bent over and then crimped in at the top to give it some stability. And this works great for growing any vining things. This particular one, I have the tomatoes growing on. If you grow indeterminate tomatoes that just keep growing taller, just weave it in and out. You don't have to bother about tying them up. It's very easy and works very well. This stake, this, um, the metal, is what I use for the gladiolus. Short sections of it can also be used for, I use them for the peppers. And again, as they grow up, I just weave it in a couple of times and I don't have to worry about the pepper plants falling over. Up here I have, it's a heavy soil, it's clay. I have a choice of either growing a garden or starting a pottery, it's that heavy. Um, there are a lot of heavy soils down in Oklahoma too. A key to working well with heavy soils is to get the plants up out of any ponding water from rainfall. You use raised beds to do that. You grow the plants up on a higher level, let the water, excess water drain off. You can use, you can build raised beds, you know, buy in lumber, um, you can get fancy kits, but really all the plant cares about is being up above the water. What I do is I have beds that are about two and a half feet wide, an 18 foot pathway. You, to develop this, you rototill or dig up your entire garden, pick out where your pathways are going to be and you shovel that soil onto where your plants are going to be growing. This is your permanent walkway. You always walk here. Once you've established this as your growing area, you never ever walk on it again. It's a way to keep the soil from becoming compacted and it takes the best advantage, gives the plants the best possible advantage. Um, with this heavy clay soil, one trick that we use up here is um, fall tillage. I use a shovel to dig as deeply as I can and turn it over in the fall. The freezing and thawing cycles over the winter will break up that hard clay mass into smaller particles by spring. Um, so it actually, for a brief period of time in the spring, it'll act like real soil and you can just uh, flatten it out, plant in, get your plant started before it starts coalescing into clay again. Um, right now, this is four sections for squash, the gladiolus, the peppers and tomatoes, and this is my catch-all rose. And you're seeing it now in its transition between the spring garden, when this was all broccoli, there were carrots there, this is my snow peas and snap peas and the uh, beans behind me. The broccoli is gone, the peas are gone, um, replanted with carrots underneath here, some onions for onion sets here, where the broccoli was, except for one that I'm saving for seed, has now been replanted with uh, cilantro uh, for fall crop and we'll put that in the freezer. The carrots, the last of the carrots here, will be pulled soon. That'll get replaced by probably red Siberian kale. Right in front here, these are our amaryllis. 
they summer over in the garden. They become garden plants to build up the bulb. In the fall, we let that dry out and then bring it in for winter color. Now this is one way, as I said, to deal with heavy soils is to make sure you never walk on it, keep it tilled, and good organic matter is always helpful. But in my other section of garden, basically just kind of try to avoid the soil, and I'll show you that now. If you're wondering what this is, to my right here, these are pear trees on espalier, on wires. This helps support the young trees, and it also gives a, a way for me to structure the tree, keep it narrow, keep it pruned down so we can get more trees in a small space, a small narrower space. Now this is the other part of my, the vegetable garden. In here, I don't bother trying to dig the soil. I, well, one nice thing about my wife having two horses is they provide a lot of organic matter. So I have the luxury of, in this garden, on top of the soil is put four to six inches of composted horse manure and you plant in that. This empty section that you see in front was onion crop that's already been harvested and the nice thing about preparing the soil after you've harvested is you just kind of scruffle it up smooth it out and you're done um, also the weeds because they're growing in the manure instead of in soil are very easy to pull two very big advantages here again I've got there are four sections that you may or may not be able to see clearly um, and rotate them through. There's the onions. This section, I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do with it. This year it's got potatoes and those aren't weeds, that's rice. Um, my wife just shakes her head when she sees that I'm trying to grow rice. But you should always be trying something new and different. If, it's not, if you're not making your neighbors think you're crazy, you're not gardening fully. Pumpkins, we always line our driveway with pumpkins instead of buying them, grow our own. And Indian corn for decorative. And also this variety, Mandan Bride, it has a very nice range of colors and tried it last year, grinding it up, it makes a very nice cornbread also. So while our climate here is not the same as yours, there are things that you can do that are the same both in Oklahoma and up here in Vermont. And I'm just really pleased that I was able to come visit with you again today. I hope Oklahoma Gardening has years and years more of success. And for you, I wish that all your vegetables are great and all your weeds are small and easy to pull.